Well, hello everyone, this is Dave Strong from the Schmidt Music Saxophone Shop, and today we're going to check out this. This is the Yamaha YDS-150 digital saxophone. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the features on it, how it sounds, how it feels to play, and, you know, overall if it's, uh, if it's worth getting. Very interesting instrument. It's a digital saxophone with a metal bell and a real mouthpiece, although not a real reed. We're going to check it out in just a second here. Alright, so Yamaha has been uh, dabbling in digital uh, wind controllers and wind instruments for years. When I was a kid, I loved Michael Brecker, I loved the Iwi, I loved that Bob Mincer was doing some of that stuff, and a bunch of other people, and I was always intrigued by that, and I bought the Yamaha Wind Jammer. I don't remember what the model number was on that, but I had that boy in the early 90s. It's all I, want. all I wanted as a kid was one of those Iwis, the Akai Iwi. Uh, but those were really expensive, and I saved up my allowance and got one of the wind jammers, and it was pretty cool. Um, not quite as advanced as this in a lot of ways, but it was something fun, and it let me get some licks under my fingers uh, when I couldn't be blowing my louder horn. Now, in the 30 years or so since I got that, a 20, late 20 years, um, they've advanced things a lot. Now, the first thing I notice when I hold this in my hands, before I even played it, uh, if you notice, I have it plugged in. You can use it with USB power, or it takes... Uh, AAA batteries, but make sure, look up what batteries it needs, because it seems like it needs some kind of specific batteries. But it seems to be working great with just a US uh, micro USB uh, cable here. I have it plugged right into my uh, computer, uh, but you can also plug it into a power bank and that kind of stuff. But before I even turned it on, the first thing I noticed was I could put a neck strap on it, which I think some of the older ones did, mine never did, but it feels very saxophone-like in your hands. Like the key work feels pretty one-to-one -one spot on with what you'd actually be playing on a saxophone. Now, when I've tried an Akai Iwi, those have the touch-sensitive keys, and don't get me wrong, the Iwi is awesome, but it's like learning a new instrument in a lot of ways. It has all those octave key rollers on the back. This does have two keys on the back. There's an octave uh, button right here, and I believe this one's to take it down or you can map other functions to it. Um, but it just feels like a saxophone. There's some other things. There's a little joystick down here next to the uh, right-hand thumb hook that you can use for pitch bends and vibratos, uh, or, and vibrato and that kind of stuff. But it has palm keys. I've, I, you know, not a lot of the electronic saxophones that I've tried had like accurate palm keys and you know the F sharp key and some of the alternate side keys. Like this, there's not really anything missing from what you'd have on a real saxophone. The other thing I notice is, see if I can get this up to the camera where there's still some light, it has this stand-in for a reed, and the mouthpiece looks like a Yamaha 4C, but it just says DS on it, but it has a real ligature, a reed that doesn't vibrate, and you don't need to get the reed vibrating. I haven't tried it with a real reed to hear what it would sound like. If you used one, you probably could get one vibrating, but it probably doesn't sound great, so I've stuck with this so far. I'll give it a try and maybe use that in a future video, but using this one, you know, you don't get any sound because it doesn't vibrate if it's not turned on. And uh, I still feel just instinctually like I kind of get my embouchure set and I bring my lip up to where I would have it to actually blow. So I did weirdly notice that after playing this for a little while today, I did feel it on my chops a little bit, which I've never had a digital sex. Normally it's just a hole you blow into and it senses how hard you're blowing and there's not much resistance. This had resistance and this had at least a little feeling of, you know, it's not gonna build chops like playing my long tones on my real saxophone for an hour. But if I absolutely couldn't make noise, this is a pretty decent stand-in. It feels pretty saxophone-like, and I'm guessing that's what they're aiming for with this. I mean, you can use it in performances. It has some cool sound effects. But what I noticed, uh, first of all, is most of the sound effects are saxophone sound effects. They have a alto, tenor, soprano, and berry section, and then the last section in the bank of all the presets that you can pick is other instruments but it's mostly saxophone sounds, and I think that's on purpose. This is being aimed, if it's my guess, Yamaha hasn't told me anything, this is being aimed as a, as a practice tool that you can also do some cool recording stuff with. And for that, I think uh, it's pretty cool, and I would love to do some recording stuff with it. And a note on top of that is you could still hook this up to a MIDI controller and get thousands of sound effects in that. And if you were gonna use this for performance, that's what I'm guessing you'd do. Uh, but as it is, Let's get into how it feels to play, how it sounds, and a couple of the other details on it. 
So yeah, just from a few notes there, it's responsive. I really like that there's enough back pressure and you can adjust that in the settings, how hard you have to blow to get it louder and quieter. But I found the default setting on that, it's pretty good. Like if I really dig in, I can get it to get to a nicer volume. And as I blow harder, you hear a little more raspy sound. It sounds electronic, of course. Uh, thankfully, they haven't found a way to digitally replicate a saxophone sound. So computers aren't gonna replace us saxophone players quite yet. But it's enough where when I was playing it and listening and practicing, it didn't really, uh, didn't really bother me and I, I felt like uh, the sound wasn't offensive and there's lots of sounds. That's the absolute, when you turn it on, default sound is what I was just playing there. Now, one thing I did have to change, and there's a bunch of functions. You hold down a function key and then one of the keys on your saxophone and it's all in the instruction manual. There's a function for key responsiveness and now the default setting for that was at a 10 out of 20. So I'm going to set it to that 10 out of 20 and play a little bit. And I've heard other people, uh, other reviews out there have liked the 10 out of 20 setting. It wasn't my favorite, and I'll, I'll kind of show you why here. So I don't know if you can notice that in there. It's still pretty good. I'll exaggerate the effect and turn it up a little more. Here, I'll turn it up all the way to 20. So notice that I'm playing chromatic scales and it's getting hung up on one note because it's trying to make sure that it's not getting inadvertent key presses in the notes. Now on 10, it was still okay. Again, at 10. I feel like I have to be very deliberate with my key presses and on real saxophone I like to be very light and delicate touch on it just for agile things and sometimes it would be great, sometimes it would get hung up on a note and I'd be playing three notes and it would only catch one or two of them. I actually found I had the best results for myself when I turned it down to zero. So if I was playing really quick chromatic stuff there. especially in fast arpeggios like that, it just, it catches all the notes. Now I do find I have to be careful and I'll have to get used to the key work. Um, the biggest thing I'm noticing so far is because the octave key is not an analog button like the rest of the keys on here seem to have an analog feel where they, you know, you can move them and there's some space in between. It's just an on and off thing. And you know, if you play a normal saxophone, you can barely touch that octave key. If you get it set up really tight, you basically, you're not having to push it all the way down, you can just kind of slightly lean into it. So that's my habit, and I find I'm right now missing the octave key occasionally. That being said, it's something, when I played this earlier, the more I played it, the more I just kind of got that muscle memory, and it started working. And that's kind of the case with all of this. Like, it feels really close to a saxophone in your hands. There's little things that you have to get used to, and the more I would tweak with this, I imagine the more I would get it exactly the way I like it. And already I feel like I can play pretty, uh, pretty comfortably on it. And so that's a big thing because that historically has not been the case with digital saxophones. They're very much a whole new animal. And even though you have a lot of knowledge of what to do with your fingers because you come from playing saxophone, you still have a lot to learn. This one within about 20 minutes and tweaking a couple settings, it felt pretty good. So uh, points for the Yamaha on that. Um, it's a... Uh, a saxophone player is going to feel pretty at home on it. Let's take a look at some of the different sounds that it can do. I'm going to quickly go through the different saxophone ones. It seems like the different saxophones, because they have, you can see here, as I'm switching through, it'll say like AO1, that's alto 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then I'm in soprano. And it seems, I'll have to go in here more, it seems like the different altos just all have a little difference in timbre. So, I'll do a couple alto ones, then I'll do a couple of the soprano, tenor, berry, and then at the end of that, spend a little time on some of the more synth sounding ones. And yeah, here we go. Uh, we'll, we'll go through some of the alto sounds. Here's A01. Let's go to alto two. Okay, a little 
little difference. It's minor, but I can I can hear a little timbre difference. Here's alto three. A little darker, a little less uh, buzz in the sound. A four. Way darker. Um, sounding less saxophone like, but A five. Yeah, and so these are different variations of alto sound, um, and I think there's more you can even tweak within there. Um, you can put a little overdrive on it, I think. Um, we'll do one more random one before we move on. Here's A10. That's more classical sound, I guess. Kind of interesting how it articulates uh, when I was just kind of playing smoothly, but yeah, so some different things in here. And we'll move, if you want a soprano sound. Um, we'll go into, we won't do all the sopranos. Do some tenor. And I didn't notice this before. That was a berry. It is actually switching it between B flat and E flat. I did not notice that when I was trying it earlier. That's kind of cool, but. Kind of cool. Okay, so those are the saxophone sounds. Um, tons you could experiment with there. And uh, let's check out this wheel on the side here. So if I play a note, or not a wheel, it's kind of like a little joystick. Yeah, it can bend a little up and down, and I noticed in the instructions you can change how much that bends. And if I go side to side, actually it's not doing it on that one. On some of them it adds a little more vibrato into it. Um, let's move into the C area. And now C is all the non-saxophone instruments. So we'll play a couple of those and see how those feel. Here's C01. kind of voice there. Let's see you two. Pick another random one, CO8. that active key but yeah some cool sounds on here I could see you having a lot of fun doing some creative stuff with this here C10 whoa kind of neat C12 One thing I have noticed is alternate fingerings, altissimo fingerings, haven't done anything yet. I've been experimenting with a couple of them and I do some of them just out of muscle memory. Um, some of that stuff may be built in. I'm gonna have to really dig through some manuals and tips and stuff, but it, something that, you know, there's there's enough of, enough of the basic fingerings that really uh, make you, you can get some really cool sounds without those. But let's see here, 14.
Kind of cool, yeah. Also, I've noticed I went to growl, and of course that does nothing too. Same thing, moving the mouthpiece here doesn't do anything. I like, they put in some features that make it feel very saxophone-like. Even if those things don't exactly do, I just feel I'm starting a little closer to home on it. I'll try one more setting on here. C16. I have no idea what these are. I'm finding them out as I do them. Eventually, if I played this more, I'm sure I'd get used to them and learn them. Actually, to be honest, having a lot more fun with the synth sounds than the sax sounds. Sax sounds are fine, they're great. I think that's a nice touch that they're aiming it at a saxophone player. But some of these I'd love to play around with. And if I was doing a recording, uh, and I might try one of those, I might find something to do kind of like an interesting electronic or hypno uh, something and do a little uh, interesting uh, funk stuff. That, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, first impressions, and that all is all this is. This is the first impressions video. This thing's a lot of fun. Uh, it, I believe it goes for eight hundred dollars or seven ninety nine ninety nine or something like that. Um, but a lot of fun. A couple things I would say. Uh, I'll get, take a little getting used to on the octave key. It doesn't come with the batteries or the cable. That's one thing I, I, I do wish Yamaha had thrown some of that in there. Not the biggest thing in the world. It's a cheap cable. You can get a really long one. You can plug it into a battery pack or a power bank or something like that. Or you just get some rechargeable triple A's and you're good to go. But it would have been nice to see it in the box. Other than that, I could see having a lot of fun with this thing. And I'm going to keep playing it over the next few days and try to make maybe a recording with a backing track just to see uh, what we can do with this thing. But uh, first impressions is, you know, for 800 bucks, uh, pretty fun toy, pretty fun practice aid. I could see, a, you know, 13-year-old me would have lost my mind over something like this. And, you know, 42-year-old me is pretty excited too. So it's a lot of fun. Anyway, um, we'll do some more on this. The uh, Yamaha YDS-150. Uh, pretty fun, uh, not, too, not super expensive. And uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it. So if you have any questions about this or any of the other stuff that we talk about, make sure to reach out to me in the comments below or at the saxophone shop at schmidtmusic.com. And you know, if you enjoy these videos, give them a like, uh, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and you'll get notified when new videos come out. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.